Is it too late for you to start learning how to code and change your career and get into the tech industry and work as a software engineer or a web developer or something like that? And it's one of the most common questions people ask whenever I'm talking to people in my Discord or in the comments here or just uh, when we do a consultation. And I want to talk about that because I didn't start learning how to code until I was over 30 years old. I think I was 33 years old when I wrote my first line of code. So my response to everyone asking that question is no, it's never too late to start learning how to code and to change your life by getting into the tech industry. But it's not easy. I don't tell anyone it's easy because it's definitely not. It requires a lot of work. And if you are older, you might have some other responsibilities and difficulties that younger people might not have. You know, a lot of people are surprised to hear that I just started this first job as a web developer. I was 35 years old when I started the job. And, you know, I thought I'm starting to, to look like an old man, but I guess some people are surprised to know that I'm actually 36 years old right now. And that's, yeah, I I was very worried, you know, when, when I was... 34 years old and sitting there learning HTML and CSS, I was worried. I'm not going to lie, but I just kept going and I knew if my skills get up to where they need to be, eventually I will get that job and it did happen. So I'm going to just take a second to tell you about the lifestyle because I am sitting here at this desk. I work fully remote. I'm at home all day and you have to stay healthy you know, you can't sit in this chair the whole day. You got to get up and stretch and move your body during a lunch break, go out and run or go to the gym, whatever you have to do. So to keep myself healthy and I guess looking young, I don't know if you think I look young for my age, I don't know. Regular exercise, eating healthy food, getting plenty of rest, and also using all natural skincare like this from one of the Shopify stores I set up from my freelancing work that I do on the side. This is from AZ Naturally. It is not a sponsorship deal or anything. I'm just doing this. I don't get any money for for sharing this. I just believe in these kinds of products. You know, I've got this face and body moisturizer. I don't know if you can see that there. The lighting is probably not good in here. But these kind of products, uh, there's like the skin products that I use and really just anything, even the food I eat, if there's some something I'm putting in my body or on my body, it should only have a couple of ingredients, maybe four or five at most. Um, a lot of things only have one ingredient. If you're interested in this kind of healthy stuff, I like to support people who are doing this. So again, this was one of my freelance clients. I built their Shopify store. And if you want to check this stuff out, you can go to their store, get whatever you want. And at the checkout, let's put in the code web dev Japan. It doesn't say what the percentage is, but it will be a good discount, probably 15, 20%, the best discount at the time. So anyway, let's continue with the whole topic of getting into the tech industry after 30 years old after being 40 years old. You know, I can also show the example of one of my coworkers. You can go to the the company YouTube channel and see his full interview here. Yeah, this newest one from one month ago, getting in getting into tech in your 30s. So this guy I did the interview with, I'll just show a clip here. If you have any advice for people who are trying to get into the tech industry, uh, actually, you know, uh, when I decided to my career from a sales to the engineering, I was really eager to achieve it. But actually, yeah, uh, I, I can tell you that this is a, uh, this is a happy ending. I'm satisfied now. And I really think, uh, it was a correct decision. And I'm happy now, but till I get this job, this position, there were harsh times during the COVID and uh, 
things wasn't progressing I expected at all. And even after I studied uh, all the subjects in India, it took about three years to, you know, for me to get this job, right? So there yeah. was some other uh, you know, stories. It is quite personal. So, you know, things are not happening as you expect sometimes, right? So when I resigned my company, I prepared my career change for many years. I, I think maybe two or three years, I spent time for the planning and preparation. So I prepared a lot of saving and I researched many schools and I researched uh, some countries uh, potentially uh, I will go and study in. So I just want to be sure that I can do this. But that kind of, you know, unexpected event like COVID changed every plan. So, you know, it is very difficult that I, I advise or give some tips for somebody because whatever you think, in many times, it doesn't happen like you planned or it doesn't, you know, happen like you expected. But the choice is only one. Will you so just do it or just stay where you are now, right? Yes. So whatever you select, you can be happy. Even though you don't change your career, yeah, you can be happy. It is not that you can't be happy. But uh, yeah, if you really want to do it, then why not just try? <laughs> yeah, just do it. A common pattern I see is, and even in my own case, you know, I went, when, when I quit my last English teaching job here in Japan, I went for how many months unemployed? I guess four months. I, I was four months unemployed. Finally, when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going all in on this. And, you know, I, luckily I had my my wife supporting me in this whole thing you know if you don't have a supportive environment it's going to be hard a lot of people do that they they get to a point where their skills are getting on up there and you just know that if if you really hit it hard for you'll know you'll know when that when when that time comes you'll just you'll you'll get the feeling that if you just had three or four months to just do it full time and not worry about other other things like your job and stuff that you could get hired you'll, you'll get to that point and, and you'll realize it and i think i've asked the the ceo the same question and he said in this video the the ceo of our company i mean he said the most important thing is passion so his advice was really good if you want to make a change in your life I mean, it's up to you. Are you are you gonna if you're not happy with how things are, are you just gonna sit there and continue the same thing and five years, ten years from now, be in the exact same situation? How will you feel? Um if that's thinking about that is not a good feeling, then you should do something to change it. And yeah, like my coworker said, just do it. That's what we did. We just did it. I want to show another example of someone. You might know this YouTuber, Kenny Gunderman, but um, his dad got into the tech industry. He His dad was 45 years old. I don't know if that's when he started studying from unemployed to junior software developer at 45. I can't remember. I watched his story before he like lost his job or the market wasn't doing well for whatever he was doing, but definitely over 40. He was definitely over 40 when he started learning how to code. And as it says here, became a junior software developer at 45. And now both, both of these guys are living their best lives. So only good things will happen if you if you put in the work to learn how to code. One thing that's particularly scary for people who are, you know, getting over 30 years of age is they're thinking about, okay, if if you spend 
couple of years studying this stuff and finally you get a job you might be you know 33 34 35 years old or even later and then you're starting out fresh no experience you're brand new in the industry and then you're thinking about people who've maybe been in the industry already for 20 30 years or longer and that can be kind of intimidating but the way I think about it is if you think about people who were building websites 30 years ago, the the technology was completely different. I mean, they might have been using, like learning how to do stuff in Flash Player and all kinds of these things that aren't even able to be used anymore. Like they they could have spent a whole decade of their career building up their skill in a a technology and then it's gone now or maybe not maybe they learned something like java or like a c plus plus or something and it's still going strong but i'm just saying some of these technologies like what we're using for almost every project at the company where i work is next js it was initially released in 2016 that doesn't mean it was popular When did it start getting popular? I don't know. That was before I joined the industry, before I knew anything about it. But let's say maybe it took a few years to catch on. So you're talking about five years. It's been popular for five years. This is very new. So I think that should kind of lessen the mental burden. If you think about it like that, some of these technologies have only been popular for five or 10 years and you know people at companies are always changing i think people are changing after one or two or three years in the tech industry they're always there a lot of people are hopping jobs Uh, everything is changing so you can come in fresh and hit the ground running and really just make a name for yourself and make a good living and have a good financial future i cannot stress that enough and i just pulled up some of these other ones you know we're using typescript okay that was 12 years ago um react Vue.js 10 years ago um we're not really using this in my job but i see a lot of job postings for this so yeah i mean these things these technologies it's like 10 years old so for some of these things if it became popular five, eight years ago, and people started learning it, you're not that far behind. Even if someone has been in the industry for 20 or 30 years, you're really not that far behind for some of these things. That's why I say always go with the money stack. There could be more than one money stack, but the one that I know is this. You can get in, get some experience in a couple of years and or a few you know two or three years and be making a lot of money with it and of course you know it's it's always it's an ongoing process you're going to be learning new things and it's going to cycle through but overall i would say like my coworker said just do it if you're thinking about doing it just do it Hey, if you're still here watching, that means you might be pretty serious about taking the next step in your coding journey. If that's the case, you can check the description of this video and get the link to my Calendly, and we can do a free consultation. At the very least, I can help push you in the right direction, and if we both think you're a good fit for it, you can join my mentoring program, and I can really help you reach your goals. So check that link down there, and I'll be waiting to talk with you. All right, see you.